team keep it clean today is an amazing day and we got some great stuff to talk about with our baltimore ravens and it's funny because yesterday we talked about some exciting news that could potentially be coming for the baltimore ravens and that's them really being able to utilize both mark andrews and isaiah likely in the second year of this todd monken offense but who's the orchestrator of that offense who is the guy that's going to be running the show for that offense well that's none other than lamar jackson and of course he has missed the majority of the voluntary OTAs and there have been a bit of an uproar especially from some media guys that we did mention in previous videos but today guess who's back guess who showed up for the Baltimore Ravens and showed up in a big way it was none other than Lamar Jackson he made his return to the OTA so he is officially back so Mike Florio you can shut it my friend um and this is actually the final week of Ravens voluntary OTA so it ain't like he had to be back. It ain't like it was like, all right, Lamar Jackson, it's time, it's now or never, it's do or die. No, 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 he ain't even had to come back. It's still voluntary. But um, he decided he wanted to come back anyway. And Marcus Williams, he was there as well. It was his first appearance at OTAs. Mark Andrews was in the building. Roquan Smith was there too. Now, this was interesting because this came from my guy, Nikhil Mehta, who had been covering the Ravens, doing an amazing job at it. He said, Lamar Jackson, his first pass to a teammate was a dime to Mark Andrews in the corner of the end zone. And he said, some things just never change. And so, yeah, Lamar showing like, hey, I might have took some time off or whatever, but I still got it. I still know my guys. And, I mean, he was down in South Florida putting in work with Zay Flowers and Nelson Aguilar and them. Uh, even before the video that came out a couple of days ago, like, he, he, he been doing his thing. So, again. There was never, and in my opinion, it should have never been a worry about Lamar Jackson uh, missing voluntary OTAs. Now, if it was mandatory, so like, oh, okay, I get, but voluntary, there should have never really been concern with that. Um, I understand some people's reasoning for the concern, especially because of they don't want there to be a hangover with the Baltimore Ravens. They don't want them to sort of lose that fire that they got, especially them losing the AFC Championship last year, but they ain't going to lose it. You know Lamar ain't going to lose it. So it, he's fine, and they're fine, and everything will be uh, A-OK. -okay. Now, uh, with Jameson Hensley, uh, he said that for Ravens OTAs on Tuesday, the best player, or oh, excuse me, the best play, well, probably the best player too, but the best play was Lamar Jackson throwing in a very tight window to hit safe flowers in the right corner of the end zone. So Lamar Jackson, again, showing like, look, I took a vacation. Let me vacation. Let me chill out. And y'all chill out talking about me crazy like that. I got it. Relax. But then uh, Jameson Hensley said his favorite play was Ronnie Stanley catching a batted pass. That batted pass was actually from Mr. Brent Urban. So Brent Urban out here making plays on Lamar Jackson, by the way. Uh, he said Ronnie Stanley caught it, ran upfield, and then he hit a little spin move too. So look, Lamar Jackson is back. If Ronnie and Stanley hitting spin moves, he's healthy. He's out because ain't no, ain't no unhealthy Ronnie Stanley hitting those spin moves like that. We already know what time it is with that. But, Lamar, welcome back. We're glad to have you. So let's get it. Now, we talked about Lamar Jackson being back and some other guys as well, but there were also some absences. Uh, some notable guys were Adafi Away, David Ajabo, Justin Matabike, Isaiah Likely, uh, Michael Pierce, Kyle Vinoy, uh, Adisa Isaac, Justice Hill, Marlon Humphrey, Keaton Mitchell, Derrick Henry, Brandon Stevens, Kyle Hamilton, Arthur Millette, Rashad Bateman, Deontay Hardy, Bo Bray, uh, Trayvon Mullen, Matthew Rig Rigby, and Nichols. So those guys were not in the building today but guess what we not about to do we ain't making no big deal of it because why it's voluntary now today following OTAs they had a couple of people speak uh, and wide receiver Nelson Aguilar was one of them and something that he said stuck out to me a lot and he said that the our offensive coaching staff they have encouraged player feedback and when you hear about that to, to some of y'all might seem minimal like oh it ain't no big deal but that says a lot to me because that lets me know that the coaching staff is not on no high horse the coaching staff is not like no 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 no. y'all players stay in a player's place let us coaches do what we do no it's the coaching staff having humility being willing to listen to the players how they feel about different things how they feel about different things being incorporated into their schemes and whatnot and that's big because that can make the coach player relationship 
go to a, a whole nother level. So the fact that they're doing that, hopefully they continue to do that, not only throughout the offseason, but during the season too. That's important because you need some real time feedback in real time from your players, not just before the game, not just even after the game, but even during the game. I think that's a phenomenal idea uh, that they continue to incorporate that. Now, y'all know with these OTAs, they may not have the pads on, but we still get some fun matchups in the building. And back to my guy, Nikhil Meta. He said the key matchup of the day at Ravens OTAs was rookie wide receiver Devontae Walker and rookie cornerback TJ Tampa. He said Walker beat Tampa twice deep down the sideline and once on an excellent back shoulder connection in the red zone. Uh, that's what we like to hear. We love, we love to hear that. Now, remember, again, the, the pads ain't on, but... He did still get him. He said later on in practice, Tampa deflected a similar back shoulder attempt. So Tampa said, fool me once. Fool me once. That's shame on me. That's my fault. Fool me twice. No. Hold up. I'm sounding like a fool. It's fool me once. Shame on you. But fool me twice. Hey, that's my fault. And TJ Tampa said, you ain't getting me two times, my friend. And then it says, worth noting, though, that a padless practice with minimal contact puts Tampa, who is a press technician, at a disadvantage against the speedy walker. So he, he couldn't get no hands on him like that because, again, they, they running without the pads. So it's not as a, a physical of a practice as it normally would be. So that gave Tez Walker that advantage, and I'm glad he took advantage, but TJ Tampa, he made up for it at the end. But he said Tampa used his other best traits, his length and his football IQ, to win that last rep. Now, Tez Walker is somebody that's been a wide receiver for the entirety of his career. But we cannot say the same for another Baltimore Raven, that being Malik Cunningham, who recently officially made the official switch to being a full-time wide receiver. And our guy, Kyle Barber, who's been covering the Ravens for years, uh, he said wide receiver Malik Cunningham had a few excellent reps today. Multiple tough catches, including one where he fully extended along the sideline to make the snag. So Malik Cunningham, he stretched out. Reached out and got it, made the play happen. And that's what we like to see. Again, for the position that he's in, especially him now being a full-time wide receiver, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really, really tough for him to make the active roster because Ravens have a lot of guys that are essential locks at the position right now. So for him to even scratch the active roster, he is going to have to go crazier than crazy. But it sounds like he's off to a good start, and that's what we love to see. Now, we've talked about plenty of Ravens that are in the building, Ravens players and coaches. But what about the exes? What about some players that left and some coaches that left the Baltimore Ravens? Well, there's plenty of those over in L.A. at the Chargers. And it seems like it could possibly be one more because Tony Jefferson, former Baltimore Raven, former 49er, former Giant, former Cardinal too, but former Baltimore Raven Tony Jefferson who – Came out of retirement. And he's like, look, I'm trying to play again. I'm trying to make this thing happen. He is headed over to L.A. to go have a workout with those Chargers. So, you know what? Honestly, again, with Bradley Bozeman, with Hayden Hurst, with J.K. Dobbins, with Gus Edwards, and I know there's more, but, oh, with uh, Ben Mason, with Greg Roman, with Jim Harbaugh, who is a former Baltimore Raven too, by the way, but um, with all those guys over there. All those ex-Ravens, I feel like Tony Jefferson would fit right in. 